Hello everyone and welcome to another reviews video tutorial. My name is Juan and today I'm going to be covering the topic Arima models and Box Jenkins model selection in reviews. So for this video what I have done is I have a real example using real data for the US. We have the consumer price index that goes until the year 2020. It's monthly data. It's the most updated data we have. It's until November of 2020. So the idea with this is that we are going to be doing this together step by step with this variable. We are going to try to forecast using an appropriate model selected with the Box Jenkins model selection criteria. So let's begin then. Stay, stay, stick to this video. Uh, step by step, we're going to be doing this together. So let's begin with an introduction. The ARMA is an autoregressive moving average model. ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. The authors Ponks and Jenkins in the year 1970 introduced this three steps method to select appropriate models for estimating and forecasting univariate models. So it's very important to, to highlight that this is for univariate models. It's the variable itself is going to be predicting future values. So that's why I put here, let my past predict you my future. We're not going to be regressing one variable among many other variables. We're just using past realization of a variable to explain uh, or predict future values. So Box and Jenkins three stages are first identification, second the estimation, and third we have the diagnostic and forecasting. It's uh, also important to highlight that some textbooks have split step number three and they have made make it into four steps. So you will have diagnostic as step three and then forecasting as step four. But this won't really change the analysis. We're going to do diagnostic and forecasting uh, slowly in uh, step number three. So let's go first then with the identification. What are we doing in this step? Well, we are going to analyze the properties of our variable of interest. And what we are going to check if is if our variable is stationary. Why? Well, the Box Jenkins model uh, method, sorry, um, works with stationary variables. It's important to to also consider that most economic variables are non-stationary and they need to be different to remove trend. Um, so how are we going to test them for stationarity? Well, we're going to take a look at the graph, we're going to take a look at the correlogram, and then we're going to do some formal tests. If our variable is stationary, then we would be trying to estimate an ARMA model. If our variable is non-stationary, then we're going to be working with an ARIMA model. So I would like to make a stop here and just let you know that I have a video where I have explained step by step with clear details on how to conduct these different tests and how to do all these stationarity tests. But we're going to do a quick review here right now with you. Um, I'm going to go now to my my views, let's start with the first step. I have here my consumer price index. We would like to check if this variable is stationary. We're going to go quickly to take a look at the correlogram uh, in levels. So what we can see here is that the autocorrelation doesn't decay quickly. Yes, decay quickly would be doing this. We don't see that behavior here and it has a significant lag. Um, so taking a look at the graph as well, always take a look at the graph. What we can see here is that it clearly has a trend, a positive trend. So we're going to now do a formal test, unit root test. We go here under view, unit root test, standard unit root test. We're going to select it in levels and we're going to include the trend and intercept because that's what we can see here that our variable does have an upward trend. We're going to click OK. And let's take a look at now at the results of this test. I would like to start first by, by checking if our constant, yes, including the intercept, is significant. And we can see that this value is smaller than 0 0.05. So the constant, the intercept, does belong to this, to this um, variable. And the trend, if you can see here, is also smaller than 0 0.05. So including the trend and the intercept in this test was was correct. And let's take now a look at the p-value because the p-value is bigger than 0 .00, uh, than 0 0.05, sorry. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. And what is the null hypothesis? Our 
variable has a unit root. So then let's go back to our slide. And what we can see here then is that we have a non-stationary variable. We are going to be working with an ARIMA model. Now the identification step. We have to check the correlogram to determine the P for the AR component and then the Q for the MA component of the ARIMA. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to take a look at the, uh, at the correlogram. Yes, take a look at the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. And this is going to suggest diverse possible models. Again, these are possible models because we want to then test whether or not these are good models. So let's try to do this together, the identification step. We have the consumer price index. Let's check if in first differences our variable is stationary. We do unit root test in first difference. And we can see here that the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05. So we have to use, like I said, um, the variable in differences. In this case, in first differences is going to be enough. We're going to take a look at the correlogram in first differences. And here we have to use the correlogram to determine the identification part, which is going to be, OK, what are the possible models? So the possible models are going to be the following. With the autocorrelation part, we're going to determine the MA component. And with the partial correlation here, we're going to determine the AR component. So what we can see here, this line is going, is crossing the line here, the first one. So this could be an MA1 model. Here we have another line that is crossing. So this could suggest that maybe an ARIMA 111, yes, we have an MA1 component and an AR1 component, could be a possible model. And also what we can see here is maybe including this, an MA3, and an AR1 is another possible model. So let's let's um, so those are the two possible models we have: an ARIMA, an ARIMA model 111, or an ARIMA model 113. Again, 11 and 13. So let's let's go back now to our slide. So a key hint that I put here is parsimony. What does it mean, parsimony? Adding more variables will increase the model feed. This means the R square is going to increase. Maybe you will think it's it's a better model, but it's at the cost of decreasing the degrees of freedom. Basically, in easy words, we don't want to add needless variables. Yes, we don't want to do an AR99 uh, with a difference in 25 times the variables. No, we want to keep this simple. We want to keep it, uh, like I'm saying, parsimony. It's very important. We want to keep it simple. So let's go now to the next step. Well, now it's, uh, stage two is estimation. It's time to estimate all our possible candidate models. So what were our models? Well, ARIMA 111 and ARIMA 113. Uh, so what is the objective? Well, we want to find a stationary and parsimonious model that fits the data well. So how are we going to do this? Which model is better? We're going to estimate them, and then we're going to check the following. We're going to check that the ARMA components are significant, and we're going to be comparing the KK, Schwartz, and Hannan Queen criterion. And the smaller one is going to be better. So OK, let's do that in the views. We're going to go um, here. Well, up here you have quick. We're going to go to estimate the equation, and we are going to use the variable in differences. That's why we type D for difference of the CPI. And we're going to include a constant, an AR1 co component, and an MA1 component. So here in the options, um, also something is how do you estimate this? Well, if you use, by default, uses the maximum likelihood method. You can change this to constant least squares or generalized least squares. So let's just stick, again, just with the default, which is the maximum likelihood method here. Um, um, so let's, let's just click uh, in OK. And here is going to drop our results. So um, these are the, 
is showing here the AR and MA components. So I'm just going to name this equation as AR1, MA1. We're going to do the analysis in a little bit. We have the first model. We save it here. Here we have it. And now let's do quick. And we're going to estimate now the other model. We're going to go the difference of the CPA. We include a constant. And now we do AR1, we said. And then we have an MA3 component. That's all. We're going to click OK. I'm going to name this as an AR1 MA3. That's the name that I put to, to my equation. So now let's compare. Let's take a look. Let's see which model uh, would work better. I'm going to open both. Um, let's see if I can open both here together. Both equations. Here we have them. And let's go quickly to the slide. I just want to read for you again um, what are we going to take a look at, the significance of the ARMA components, and then we're going to be comparing the model criterions, Akaike, Schwartz, and Han and Quinn. So OK, so let's take a look. Here we have our ARIMA 1.1, our ARIMA 1.3. Uh, so here, what we can see quickly is that for this model, this type of specification that we did, these components are not significant. Um, in, the, in this model, in the ARIMA 1.3, they are. Yeah, so this, this model is more appropriate, at least taking a look at, at the significance of the components. The second thing that we can look is the R squared. What we can see here is clearly that my ARIMA 1.3 R squared is better than my ARIMA 1.1. But again, you don't really want to take a look at the R square um, because a better goodness of fit model, uh, sorry, um, a goodness of fit um, would be to take a look at the adjusted R square because we're including more variables. Um, 0.19 and here is 0.15. So again, we can see that this model is better. And now let's take a look at this. The Akaike criterion. We can see here this is 1.38, and we can see here that this Akaike criterion is 133. So this one is smaller, this one is better. We can take a look at the Schwartz, 146, this one is 141, this is better. We can take a look at the Hannan Queen, this is 141, and this is 136, this is better. So again, what is our possible model then? This one, Arima, the Arima 13. This is the model that we are going to be using. I stick it here, and now let's go back to my slide. OK, so now let's go to our step number three, which is diagnostic and forecasting. So we have our potential candidate model. Remember, it was the ARIMA 113. So now what? Well, what we are going to do is to ensure that it's, it satisfies the requirements for a stable univariate process. What do we have to check? Well, we have to check that the residuals of the model are white noise. How are we going to do that? We're going to take a look at the Leon Box Q statistic. And it's going to help us to conduct the, the hypothesis of the residuals are white noise. That's the null hypothesis. We are assuming that all of our residuals are white noise. So let's let's test for this. We have, again, here we have our ARIMA 113 model that we had estimated. We're going to go into view. We're going to go into residual diagnostics. And here we have the Q statistics. So we open this. And what we can see here is that in the autocorrelation and the partial correlation, there's no values that are crossing the lines the confidence, the, the standard errors lines there. And we can see here that my p-value, um, sorry, the Q statistics are here, and the p-values are here. We can see that our p-values are bigger than 0 0.005. And that is what we are looking for. If the p-value is bigger than 0 0.005, then what we are doing is we cannot reject my new hypothesis. And what is the null hypothesis? the residuals are white noise. 
so we are good. The residuals are white noise, that's something that we are looking in the diagnostic part. The next thing is, well, check if the estimated ARMA process is covariance stationary. This implies that the R root should lie inside the unit circle. So how do we test for this? How do we check that our mod ARMA model, ARMA process, is stationary? We're going to go into view. We're going to go into ARMA structure. And we click here in roots. And we click in OK. So the white dot is the R roots. That's what we have here, and it's laying inside the circle, so that's good. We are sure now, we have confirmed that it's laying inside the circle, so the ARMA process is covariance stationary. The last thing that we're going to check if the estimated ARMA process is invertible. That implies that all the MA roots should lie inside the unit circle. Here we have the circle. The orange ones are, are the MA roots, and all of them are lying inside, as you see, the circle. So again, we have checked that the residuals are white noise, that is, that the ARMA process is covariance stationary, and that our ARMA process is invertible. So if these conditions are satisfied, then we can use this model to forecast. If the conditions are not satisfied, then what you need to do is to repeat the selection and estimation method again. So basically, try to find find another potential candidate. The same way that we did the a ARIMA 111 and the 113, well, try to see if there's any other combinations, try to see if there's any other possibilities that you should be testing for and checking that is compliant with all the requirements. So, okay, we have selected our model. It has passed the diagnostics test. What do we do now? Okay, now we can forecast. So, Something that I would like to um, remind you is that ARIMA modeling is more art than science. Yes, we I have selected this ARIMA 113, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be a perfect model. That doesn't mean that is the true model. That doesn't mean really that is going to to be telling us the whole thing, the whole truth. But this model at least is appropriate and it's is compliant at least with with some of the bench, benchmark. Um, um, requirements that we have selected. So let's go now and see how can we forecast them with my ARIMA model. I would like to know then what's going to be the consumer price index next year. So let's go with the range. We're going to click here in the range. We're going to go to 2021. Let's, um, we click OK and it's going to be inserting 12 observations. And that is good, that's what we want to do. We want to forecast those observations. So let's open now, let's take a look at um, the CPI. I wanna show you what we have just done in the spreadsheet. We have added observations. As you can see, this is in the future, 2021. We don't have these values. We are going to forecast them. So we're going to go with our model that we have said is, is the most appropriate one um, to, to forecast. We're going to click in forecast then, and we are going to forecast the values for the next year. So we're going to click here. Um, I think the last value we had was um, 2011. So we're going to be forecasting for until 2021. Forecast name, this is basically the, the variable name that is going to put. We can put any any name here if you want. Um, yeah, CPI, that was um, CPI forecast. We can put that just name, we click OK. And here has forecasted the values for next year. Let's take a look. This is gonna give us a better picture. If we um, plot these things together, we have here my CPI forecast and my CPI. We're going to open as a group, and we see here the spreadsheet. We go down again, and as you see here, this is a real variable. Um, doesn't have the values, of course, for next year, but this is our ARIMA model that we have forecasted the values for next year. So let's take a look at the graph. Okay, and here we have, this is the piece that we have forecasted. This is a real variable. 
So as you can see, it kind of uh, it looks pretty pretty okay. This forecast. Um, uh, here we have the the piece for next year. So again, um, like I said, there is no real, there is no truth, there is no real model, there is no perfection. Um, this is more, like I said, art than science. Um, it's just trying. It's a it's a trial. It's all the time trying, seeing what are different models that is at least compliant with the requirements, and then see if it can help to predict and forecast. So I hope that you find this video useful. I strongly recommend that you subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to be adding more videos about eViews, about this data, about how to use LaTeX as well, if you want to present your research paper in a, in a fancy way, or even your assignments. So again, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.